Shot in 4K ultra high definition. Your number one source for local news. WRAL News. Coverage you can count on. Breaking news out of Cumberland County where an early morning fire ripped through a mobile home. Brett Neese is there in the WRL Breaking News Tracker. Just a few hours ago, Durham City leaders approved a resolution calling for a ceasefire in Gaza. Their vote coming at nearly one in the morning after an hours long meeting and months of discussion. And it's a cold start for you this morning. Our temperatures are in the 20s up to the mid 30s. I'll show you some warmer temperatures and our forecast for later in the week. Today, Wake County school leaders will meet about joining a lawsuit against social media companies. Just ahead, how hundreds of school systems are already involved and their claims about how social media is negatively impacting students. Good morning, everyone. It is 430. Great to have you with us. I'm Renee Chu. I'm Jeff Hogan. Yeah, good to have you along here. Let's get our Tuesday started. For a lot of folks, it'll be back to work and back to school. So bus stops will be packed up and Elizabeth Gardner in the WRS Severe Weather Center with what they'll be facing temperature wise. Yeah, it's cold out there again this morning. You know, it is still February. We have some mild temperatures on the way. We do tend to start to see you know, a little bit of warmth this month and even more next month. We take a live look at downtown Raleigh right now. Our skies are clear. 34 is our current temperature and our winds are calm. And so with the clear skies, we do have the top of the tower lit in blue uh, to signify those clear skies. We're looking at temperatures right now at 28 in Roxborough. It's 27 in South Hill, 32 in Rocky Mount, 28 in Goldsboro, 24 in Southern Pine. So it is definitely cold out there this morning, but a little bit warmer in places than it was this time yesterday. Four degrees warmer in Durham and Raleigh, but eight degrees colder in South Hill. So it just sort of depends on where you are. We'll take a look at satellite and radar. We have little system sitting off the coast that is pulling away from us, but we will end up with a northeasterly flow today. This can keep our temperatures cool. So hour by hour, we'll be somewhere in the uh, mid 20s to mid 30s, depending on where you are. And then the this afternoon, we climb up to 57, which is very close to normal. I'll show you when our temperatures climb back into the 60s for highs coming up. We're following breaking news this morning in Cumberland County as fire ripped through a mobile home early this morning on Dasher Lane, just outside of Fayetteville. Brett Neese is there in the WRL breaking news tracker and Brett, those crews have been on the scene for several hours now. Yeah, now it's the investigation team that is here trying to work to find out how this fire started. This is Dasher Lane behind me. It's a smaller community of mobile homes. The home that we're talking about is at the far end here. I want to show you some video from the WRL Breaking News Tracker to show you what this scene looks like. You can see they do have uh, some yellow tape there to block off the end of the road. And uh, they are working on this one home. that There is some damage from the outside, it appears. But, of course, a lot of this damage is on the inside and uh, very contained inside of this home. Um, not typical what we see with mobile home fires. Usually we see these fires uh, really rip through the entire home and we usually don't see much of the mobile home left. So we're going to find out exactly how much damage is there on the inside. Also working to find out, most importantly, the injuries involved and how many people may have been there at the time of the fire. We're going to get that information from investigators here as soon as we get that, we'll pass it along. Live in Cumberland County, Brittany, WRL News. And more breaking news, police in Raleigh are trying to find the person responsible for shooting at a bowling alley overnight. Officers responded to the Stars and Strikes Family Entertainment Center off Capitol Boulevard. This was around 1140 p.m. A person who was shot was taken to the hospital and is expected to recover. Police say they have not yet identified the shooter. Breaking news just before one this morning, Durham City Council voted in favor of a resolution for a ceasefire in Gaza. It comes after an hours long meeting where hundreds of people gathered to speak about the issue. The vote came in five to two. The resolution urges the Biden administration to call for a sustained bilateral ceasefire and calls for an end to U.S. military aid to Israel. You can hear the cheers from the audience there. It also calls for humanitarian aid to Gaza and the release of all hostages. Coming up at 5, WRO's Laura Levine will join us with a closer look at the reaction to this decision by the city council. Social media companies are facing lawsuits across the country over the effect they have on teens. And today, leaders in Wake County schools will consider whether to join one of them. WRO's Kelsey Coffey is at Wake School headquarters this morning. And Kelsey... School boards nationwide say social media apps are damaging to kids. Tell us about this. 
Jeff, educators say social media is causing psychological damage for students, and that's impacting the classroom environment and their learning. And tonight, Wake County school leaders will meet about potentially joining that lawsuit. Attorneys from two firms will present at tonight's meeting. Eleven other North Carolina school systems have already joined the lawsuit, including Cumberland, Johnston, Wilson, Moore, and Wayne counties. These are just a few examples of what school systems are saying in these lawsuits. They claim counselors are overwhelmed by a higher demand for help. Kids are distracted by social media during the school day, and teachers are spending more time disciplining students for actions related to social media. WREL has reached out to these social media companies for comment. We're still waiting to hear back. Be sure to keep you updated on what comes. Kelsey Coffey, WREL News, live in Cary. Tonight, the Wake School Board will also consider bonuses for some school employees. The board is set to vote on giving bonuses to educators at its highest need schools. Teachers and assistant principals would get up to $3,000 in bonuses over two years and have access to more training. Principals would get up to $5,000 in bonuses. It's part of a new program designed to improve education and employee retention. It would just be for 24 lower income and lower performing schools. You can find out more about the program at the education section of WRL.com. The school board will also hear a presentation about what would be required to pay employees twice per month instead of just once per month. Any changes there would be for all Wake County public schools, though no vote is set on making changes. Tens of millions of people in California are under flood alerts today again as heavy rain continues to fall on already saturated ground and rising waterways there. This latest powerful storm is causing dangerous driving conditions leading to spin outs and overturned cars. Other drivers have gotten caught in those flood waters as well. The heavy rain has also caused mudslides all over the state. This storm is coming after other deadly storms have pounded the state two weeks ago. Happening today, we're expecting to learn the next steps in the Six Forks Road widening project. City Council is expected to consider three of five plans and then decide how to move forward. City leaders have been working on plans to widen a two-mile stretch of Six Forks Road for several years, hoping to ease traffic from North Hills to Lynn Road. The project is going to be a lot more expensive than originally planned because of soaring costs of land the city needs to buy to complete the project. The original cost was estimated at $31.3 million. That was in 2017. The number now estimated to be $119 million. Today, Brogdon Middle School students and staff will thank a bus driver for her heroic actions after this bus caught on fire with students on it. This dramatic video circulated on social media shortly after that fire near American and White Pine Drives on Friday. The driver got all 23 students off that bus safely. School administrators say a thorough investigation is underway involving both the Durham Fire Department and the company that built the bus. The bus driver, Deona Washington, will be honored in a ceremony in front of the school at 1.30 this afternoon. The U.S. is proposing a U.N. Security Council draft resolution calling for a temporary ceasefire in Gaza. And it plans to veto another vote happening today at the U.N. This morning, the U.N. Security Council will vote on an Algerian draft proposal calling for an immediate ceasefire. American ambassadors say they will veto that bill in favor of their own temporary ceasefire proposal. The American plan also calls for the release of Israeli hostages. It's unclear when or if the U.S. draft will be put to a vote. Happening this morning, North Carolina is launching a new tool for people in crisis. The opportunity to talk to someone who has been through it themselves. It's called a peer warm line because people calling will speak to a person on the other end who is living in recovery. It'll have its own phone number to call. People who call or text 988 will also have the option to be transferred to the peer line. They can also call 1-855-PEERS-NC. The program launches at 9 a.m. We have an update to the story of a Dunn police canine named Pac-Man. We told you last month about the social media support the dog garnered. Many upset that he was living in the city's animal shelter. The canine's former handler asked for Pac-Man to be retired, and now a group on Facebook is calling for the same thing. According to an event page, supporters of Pac-Man are planning to show up in support of the canine at tonight's Dunn City Council meeting. There's also a change.org petition with more than 43,000 signatures in support of retiring Pac-Man. People in Minnesota are paying their respects to three first responders killed in the line of duty. 
these officers, they leave home to go to work and they don't come home. The tributes pouring in after the shooting that claimed their lives last week. Wake County seeing a huge boost in tourism. The big economic impact conventions and events are having on the area. Your Tuesday morning is off to a cold start as you look live at Pinehurst. Meteorologist Elizabeth Gardner will join us next with the warmer temperatures we'll be feeling later this week. For 43, we're taking a live look at Apex this morning. Skies are mostly clear. It is chilly. It's definitely coat weather. We do have a pattern change coming toward the end of the week, and that's going to bring us some uh, warmer temperatures. But it's cold out there this morning in most places. 27 in Lewisburg, 26 in Tarboro, 27 South Hill, 32 in Rocky Mount. There's some spots that are a little warmer. We're above freezing in Goldsboro at 34 and 35 right now in Fayetteville. Exercise planner, it's cold out there. But, you know, if you give it until uh, 10 or 11 o'clock, temperatures will be back up into the mid-40s. We'll be in the upper 50s this afternoon, very similar to yesterday with plenty of sunshine. Our temperatures will be warming up toward the end of the week, including our morning lows. So we'll take a look at how that will feel and when we'll see another shot of some showers coming up. And happening right now in the WREL Live Center, following some breaking news out of Fayetteville this morning, the Fayetteville Police Department saying parts of I-295 are closed uh, because of an incident involving a commercial fuel tanker. They say it's closed between Cliffdale Road southbound toward Rayford Road. That stretch is closed right now. Uh, they say that motorists are encouraged to take alternate routes. Uh, this is the picture they posted. We are working to get more details on what exactly happened here. But right now, all we know is it's an incident involving a commercial uh, fuel tanker again part of 295 closed right now an Edgecombe County man is facing a number of charges for a deadly crash that killed his son and two other people highway patrol says 39 year old Jerry Pollard from Tarboro was drunk and speeding when he crossed the center line in his SUV and hit a pickup truck Saturday night three of Pollard's passengers including his 19 year old son Jeremy were killed Neighbors and first responders have pointed to a history of serious crashes in that same spot. The DOT is conducting a safety investigation, which is standard after fatal crashes. This was the scene outside of Burnsville, Minnesota City Hall, as people in the community mourn the loss of three first responders killed in the line of duty. People laid flowers on two squad cars and a paramedic truck. Two police officers and a paramedic were shot after responding to a domestic incident early Sunday morning. The visitors to the memorial ranged from those most connected to the department to those who only heard about what happened and wanted to pay their respects. These officers, they leave home to go to work and they don't come home. Just wanted to bring my daughter out and kind of pay our respects. A tough thing to explain, that's, that's for sure. A crisis response team, including a Siberian Husky and its handler, came to provide some relief and comfort to the community as well. This morning, we will hear from Capital One and Discover to officially announce their acquisition deal. Capital One says it is buying Discover Financial Services. The deal is worth $35.3 billion. It would combine two of the largest credit card companies in the United States. The two companies will host a conference call this morning with more details. We'll learn more today about the FBI's seizing of a dark website behind many ransomware attacks all around the world. Ransomware gang known as Lockbit has claimed responsibility for several attacks using the dark web. According to a message posted on the hacker's website, it confirms services have been disrupted as a result of international law enforcement action. The group has taken credit for hacks that disrupted a New Jersey health care system, Fulton County, Georgia services, and the Industrial and Commercial Bank of China. Whether it's a convention, a concert, or just a night on, out on the town, tourism means big business. The numbers are in for Wake County, and taxes collected for hotel and lodging are up. Prepared food and beverage tax revenue is also up. All of that combined produced the highest tax collections on record in 2023. Wake County drew more than $38 million in hotel revenue last year. That is up more than 15% from the year before. County Commissioner Vicki Adamson says money generated from visitors provides a benefit for people who live here. Visitors create tens of thousands of jobs and they put a lot of money into the local economy. 
Plans to upgrade PNC Arena and Raleigh Convention Center are in the works. And Wake County leaders say they plan to use tourism tax dollars to fund a 500-room Omni Hotel downtown to generate more money for the local economy. Let's face it, Renee, weather's a big draw. Also, folks coming here, and uh, we'll get that Chamber of Commerce sort of February afternoon soon enough. Elizabeth Gardner in the WRS Severe Weather Center. For now, it's normal February cold morning. It is. You know, we've, we've got some nice weather in our forecast for this week, that's for sure. We take a live look here at the legislative building, and skies are clear. Uh, pretty moon out there as you're coming. A nice little crescent moon this morning. 34 is the temperature in the triangle, but we are likely to see those temperatures dropping a little bit. Um, certainly anywhere from the upper 20s to low 30s as you're heading out the triangle and some colder temperatures in some other spots, which I'll show you. Temperatures will be climbing into the 40s by lunchtime, and it'll be very much like yesterday with the high temperature in the 50s. 24 in Southern Pines, that's our cold spot right now. It's 28 in Goldsboro, 27 in Roxboro and South Hill. It's 35 in Fayetteville and in Clinton. We take a look around town for today, looking at a high of 57 in Raleigh, 56 in Durham, and 59 in Fayetteville. There's a little system that's sitting off the coast, but it's really not going to have much of an impact on our weather here. We'll start stay mostly sunny all day, but we will have a northeasterly wind. You can see a little bit of rain um, that uh, happened overnight last night in uh, maybe at the southern part of Sampson County. All that is moving out of the area, but we will continue to see again, as I mentioned, a, a north to northeasterly flow today. That's going to keep things chilly. You can watch that last little bit of rain zipping off the coast and we just stay clear all day. We'll roll it right through lunchtime yeah. and into say five o'clock this evening. And we're just looking at uh, nice, bright, sunny skies. We are going to see a change in our wind direction. It's northeasterly right now, keeping things chilly. We'll roll through. It's still on the chilly side Wednesday, but then watch how the winds shift. We change the color to red and see our, our winds coming out of the south, and that's going to warm things up pretty dramatically for us by Thursday. So 57 is our normal high. That's what we'll see today, and then 59 Wednesday. But by Thursday and Friday, highs are in the mid-60s. Now Friday, we'll have another front come through. And that's going to bring us a small chance for some showers, and we'll walk through that with future casts coming up. And behind that, it may be cool just for a bit, but take a look at this. Uh, everybody east of the Rockies has a very good chance of above normal temperatures as we wrap up February and begin March. So if you're looking for some warm temperatures, yeah, we may see that. You know how they say March comes in like a lion and out like a lamb? Looks like March might come in like a lamb this time. As a matter of fact, look at this. A chance of some showers on Friday. After that, we're a little cooler Saturday, but right after that, we see temperatures bumping up 62 Sunday. We could hit 70 by next Monday. <gasps> Can't wait, Elizabeth, thanks. Starbucks has a new cafe designed to be more accessible for people with disabilities. What's included in the new cafe that's set to become the standard for future locations? And what's this? A college basketball game turns into a huge brawl after the final whistle. The punishment these two teams may be facing because of this huge fight. This is really bad. Oh my goodness. Full team fight. Welcome back. It is 454 as we take a live look at the lights of Rocky Mountain Mills. It is a cold start. Definitely put on your coat, but we'll warm up in quotation marks to the 50s and then we'll get a real warm up later this week. Applications are open for organizations to receive funding that support small businesses in Raleigh. Any nonprofit organizations will have to submit any new resources or innovative ideas that could benefit the business they serve. It's an effort to establish business in new or underserved areas in the city. To see if your organization is eligible, visit the city's Business Alliance program page. The application period closes March 25th. This is a game-ending handshake gone wrong. Two basketball teams may be facing disciplinary action after a brawl broke out on the court. This thing broke out between players from Texas A&M Commerce and Incarnate Word after their Southland Conference game ended last night. Broadcasters said a young girl in the crowd was hurt during the brawl. One of the team's managers had blood on his face. Neither authorities nor schools gave any official information about injuries. The conference says it is investigating what happened in this minute-long melee and what punishment the teams may face. That's unfortunate. A pair of endangered monkeys known for their signature white hair now have new names thanks to a public vote. These eight and nine-year-old cotton top tamarins are now named Toff and Suki. The sisters arrived at the Smithsonian's National Zoo in Washington last month. Nearly 5,500 people voted for their names. The winning names are inspired by characters from the series Avatar, The Last Airbender. Ah, 
Ah, I love the white hair. <laughs> Cotton top. It's pretty funny. <laughs> Starbucks has opened its first cafe designed to give more accessibility to people with disabilities. The new cafe in Washington, D.C. includes softer indoor lighting. It also has materials that minimize background noise that could disrupt people who use hearing aids. The counters are also lower to help people in wheelchairs and scooters more easily pick up their orders. All renovated and new Starbucks cafes in the future will have these new design features. We want to take a moment to say thank you this morning. The WRL Facebook page tipped over the 800,000 follower mark this week. It is the most followed news page in the Triangle. And we want to take a moment and say thank you for that. Facebook launched 20 years ago this month. It was originally called the Facebook, if you remember. <laughs> Since then, we shared thousands of breaking news and live events, plus unique North Carolina stories right there on our page. From all of us at WRAL, thank you for following. It's still the Facebook. <laughs> <Some of us. laughs> for certain generations. <laughs> breaking news we're following this morning out of Cumberland County. An early morning fire ripped through a mobile home, and Brett Neese is there in the WRAL breaking news tracker as crews work to learn what caused that fire. And it's a cold start today as you're looking live at Sanford. Meteorologist Elizabeth Gardner will join us after the break with a breakdown of the warming trend we're expecting for the week.